Right. right. And being well, bland I... doesn't entertain. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I could. Uh, I won't. I won't put my foot in my mouth and name names. But there are certain pop singers out there who are pretty darn bland. <laughs> and you all, all you have to do is hear the whining of the first uh, <laughs> phrase to know who it is. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's not Adam. It's just not him. And I think I certainly did. I can't speak for all his other fans, but I certainly felt that he'd not sold out exactly because obviously this was is also part of his personality. But I think he'd lost something. He'd lost something that usually gives him huge confidence and joy. And that seemed to be missing, you know. So I'm glad he found it again. I'm glad it's back. I'm, I'm glad that he said, well, you know, and, it, and the thing was they, that he put out a couple of, quote, mainstream pop songs right. that did not burn down the charts, True. you know, so it's like I tried to make myself conform to the cookie cutter shape, mm. and, it, and it still didn't get me that success in the golden, the brass ring anyway, Right. so I'm going to just be me, and if it, if if it's successful, great. If it's not, okay. But he also has, excuse me for being crass, but the cushion of a lot of money from performing with Queen so True. that he can relax and be himself. Yes, and I'm glad for that because I think his light is too big to put in a cookie cutter. <laughs> do you know what I, I mean? I really do. I don't think you should diminish yourself any way, in any way, shape or form. To conform to others opinion or idea of what you should be and i give yes, I, I give him absolute kudos for trying because he obviously felt that the people who were giving him this advice if it was given indeed which it seems to have been that they must know more than he does so he trusted them and he tried as you said but i'm so glad that he's kind of gone well i've tried that it didn't work so i'm going to do what i do anyway and it's just brilliant. And I love the fact that the Queen members have completely embraced that with Adam, you know? Oh, haven't they? Yeah. You know, and, and occasionally there'll be a glamber who gets their panties in a wad a little bit and says, oh, Adam swears too much. He shouldn't do that. I think it's going to upset Roger and Brian. Oh, oh <laughs> They've been alive for a long time, darling. I think they've seen it all. They've done it all themselves, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, Come on. Adam it, it could not be more outrageous enough to shock them. Definitely yeah, not, not, because I think if they could live with Freddie, <laughs> yeah. then Adam yeah. is nothing, you know what I mean? He's like, I wouldn't say he's a parent. Cocaine on their heads. Now come yes, on. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. No, no. Adam is is wonderful, and I don't think that they would think any less of him for saying a few swear words here and there. They would have heard and done much worse in their younger years, uh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. It's a rock band. Come on, guys. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And funny. It was funny. You know, yes. It was funny. Yeah. But it, you mentioned some a little while back about the confidence that he now has mm. because he is in touch with who he is as an artist mm -hmm. in a in a new way right and when i first started talking to you i said that i thought that he was wonderful and flawless nine years ago but i couldn't believe how much better he was i feel like he's always on stage or almost always appeared confident and comfortable and in command and in control. Mm -hmm. But again, this time around with Queen, there was such a natural confidence, you know, not braggadocio or anything. It just comfort. I could sit there in the audience and I felt so comfortable because he had this, like, I've got this. It was so in his grasp, it was so in his spirit, in his body, that he just oozed that confidence and comfort. Exactly, and he makes you feel safe. He's one of those amazing artists who makes you feel really safe. You feel you can absolutely let go and completely enjoy yourself because, as you said, he's got it. He's got it. He's got yeah. your back. 
he, he's not going to let you down. He's not going to start screeching notes that's going to make you constrict your throat. <laughs> he's not going to do or say anything that's going to make you completely freak out and run out of the venue. But at the same time, it's edgy. It's on the cusp of being dangerous. And it's fabulously exciting. And it's on the cusp of being, being dangerous, but it's not scary. It's not at all. It's, yeah, it's not it's, scary. Um, it's sort of like when Brian has his marathon solo, mm. and it looks like he's being lifted up into the heavens right. by Frank the robot. Mm -hmm. But in actuality, he's on a platform, right. and he has a harness, and he is firmly attached to that platform. He's not falling anywhere. Right, that's what I'm saying. It's not scary. It's right. dangerous, but it's not scary dangerous. Right. Yeah. It looks dangerous, but there's such a grounding behind it. Well, yeah, I mean... Not yeah, no, no, no. I mean, uh, these guys are professionals and it is all very thought out. And as you said earlier, very well choreographed. Everybody knows what they're doing. There's a lot of safety involved. It's a show. It's for our entertainment. And I'm suspecting yes. for theirs. They're probably <laughs> having the ball of their lives. I know I would on a stage like that with that kind of music and everything. And then, of course, they have this exceptional voice as part of it. And let's not be forgetting the fact that Adam's voice is absolutely exceptional, you know? Absolutely. Um, well, we're going to talk about that separately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And about him evolving as an artist, but I do want to concentrate on the voice, too. Mm. But the comfort thing, is maybe this is a good transition. You said how we can be comfortable, completely comfortable with it because we know he's got it. Right. And you said something about, and our throats are not going to tense up or mm -hmm. whatever. And I know exactly what you're talking about because there are many people that I cannot relax and enjoy singing because they are... Um, you explain it. <laughs> this is my introduction into you explaining how singers sympathize, empathize with another singer and why is Adam's voice comfortable that way? Well, I mean, to say it very briefly, I think Adam's voice is comfortable to listen to because it's relaxed. He's relaxed and he understands the workings of his voice completely. I think years ago I read something by his first singing teacher and she said, that Adam was always curious to know how he made the sounds he was making. And so yes. she showed him, she taught him well, and she really taught him well because he completely understands how to make the sound beautiful, comfortable, so that you don't sit there and, and worry that he's not quite going to make that note or worry that he's going to not quite succeed on stage. That's what, that's what I meant when I said he makes you feel safe. He makes you feel like you can just... Sit back, enjoy the ride, dance like a crazy person, or cry in your lap if you need to, you know? Yes. Um, but if you want to look at the voice itself, I mean, there are many important elements, obviously, to take in, into consideration when we do look at the voice. And one of them, and this is arguably the most important, is the resonator of the voice, the function of the pharynx. I'm not going to blind anybody with science here, but there are three sections to the pharynx and each are capable of contributing some kind of resonance. And it's my opinion that the laryngeal portion of Adam's pharynx is what causes that amazing ringing quality in his voice. To put it in simpler terms, the fact that he understands how to use his soft palate and his tongue to produce optimum space in his mouth cavity for the sound to come out in such a rounded, full, strong and continuous manner. You know, in classical singing, we'd say he sings in a legato way, except when the music dictates short staccato sounds. But you'll often see him sticking out his tongue, especially when he's hitting high notes or just before he hits a high note. It's to get the tongue out of the way so that it, it, he doesn't constrict the sound he's making. It makes the... Uh. Because the tongue is extremely strong. It's a very strong muscle. And it sits on top of your vocal folds. So if the tongue is in the wrong position, you strangle the vocal folds. 
And he obviously understands this. So if you stick out your tongue, it relaxes the muscles there and then the vocal folds can work properly. So that's like a very simple way of explaining it. I mean, obviously, okay. Adam makes it look so easy. But as, as we said, you know, singing is very complex. And in order to sing well, it's even more complicated. Right. In very simple terms, this is what happens when we sing. I'm just going to say it very fast. And this is exactly what he does. The air we exhale flows over our vocal folds. That's how sound happens. So the opening and closing of the vocal folds creating a pulsing effect as the sound comes out of your mouth. And we can say that this is the frequency at which we vocalize. And, and that's relevant for singing as well as for speaking. But even though this frequency is changing all the time, our basic tone are always the harmonics of our original frequency. And you and I have often talked about Adam's harmonics in his voice. I think his voice inside the vocal tract must be of certain dimensions because the wavelength of the sound we create absolutely depends on the dimensions of our air column, our vocal tract. And so there must be something in his vocal tract that allows that frequency that he's able to produce to have so many harmonics in it. That's what I'm thinking. It must be because we can hear it. We can all hear it. And that is the key to the resonance. The fact that, that the dimensions of the vocal tract is what makes the, the length of the notes, the wavelength of the notes, so harmonious. But what complicates matters more is that no two wavelengths are the same size and shape. And on top of that, the singer can change the sound by the way they articulate the words or use their tongue. And I think Adam is acutely aware of that because you can often hear him changing vowel sounds so that the sound that comes out is the same, that it doesn't suddenly jump and change, that it is equal in intensity, tonality and beauty and frequency. And so therefore the harmonics are able to be the same. And that's what's so pleasing. And of course, on top of that, we are dealing with an instrument that is made up of muscles and tissue, which are all relatively soft. This dampens and absorbs the energy of the sound being made. So when a singer like Adam blows us away with his full, bright, ringing sound that fills the venue and bathes us in his voice, we cannot help but be in awe because we don't necessarily understand exactly how he makes it he may not i think he knows the the feeling of it because when you use your voice as a singer you experience the sound you feel the the instrument you you feel the sound coming out and it, it is addictive it's a very sensual experience and so he will feel that but he may not necessarily consciously go right here I'm going to close my vocal folds a bit more here I'm going to open it a bit more I don't think it's that that he's thinking about at all really but basically that's how we all sing and that's how he sings but I think physiologically his body allows him to sing in a way that I don't think many other people can because their build is different their lung capacity is different their vocal tract is different I don't want to detract from the fact that he's worked extremely hard to do what he's doing. I mean, he's trained. We know that he's worked very hard. He talked about it. And you cannot be that good at what you do without working extremely hard. And so when people say things like, well, of course, he's just naturally talented. I want to smack them because, he's, <laughs> yes, he's naturally talented. But it's like anybody with talent. If you don't hone it and craft it and work on it, you don't achieve this. It's like somebody going, well, that, that guy can really sprint, but I don't know if he can be an Olympic athlete. But if he works hard, he could be. It's like that. To me, it's like if I give you a Stradivarius violin, mm -hmm. that's not going to make you a concert violinist. No, I'll probably scratch the it. <laughs> the Stradivarius violin has a sound that is like no other violin. True. It's an exceptional sound that people pay millions of dollars to get. True. But if you're not able to 
technically yes. and artistically play that instrument at the level that that sound needs. Yes, it doesn't totally work. Wasted. Yeah, exactly. Tolly, that is the best analogy I've ever heard for Adam's voice. Actually, it reminds me of what you were saying earlier about his newfound or supposedly newfound confidence, because you're right. I mean, he's always been confident. I just want to go back to that because what you've just said reminded me of this. It's like somebody driving a normal car and then buying themselves a Ferrari. It takes right. a few months to get used to the fact that you're driving a Ferrari, but at some point you will get so used to it that it would feel normal. And I think that that's what's happened to Adam. He sang other things with other people, and then he sang with Queen. And it took him a few goes around to get used to the Queen Ferrari. And now he is yes. 